The cardiac cycle is the continuous rhythmic sequence of events that repeats during every heartbeat, allowing the heart to efficiently circulate blood unidirectionally throughout the body. Cardiac cycle events can be divided into systole and diastole. Systole represents contraction, during which blood is expelled, while diastole refers to relaxation, during which chambers fill with blood. When not specified, systole and diastole refer to ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. The cardiac cycle can be subdivided into seven phases, atrial contraction, then the three phases of ventricular systole, isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection, and reduced ejection, then the three phases of ventricular diastole, isovolumetric relaxation, rapid ventricular filling, and reduced ventricular filling, also called diastasis. First, we have atrial contraction. This starts with an electric impulse in the sinoatrial, or SA node, the heart's pacemaker. The electrical signal depolarizes the atria, causing them to contract and pump blood into the ventricles. Note that there is a delay once the signal reaches the atrioventricular, or AV node. The delay is only approximately 0.09 seconds, but it is extremely important. It ensures that the atria have fully contracted ejecting their blood into the ventricles before the ventricles contract. Next is isovolumetric contraction, known as such because the volume of blood in the ventricles remains constant while pressure increases. As atrial systole ends, the ventricles begin to contract. Because both the atrioventricular and semilunar valves are closed, blood volume in the ventricles stays constant, while ventricular pressure rises rapidly. Because ventricular pressure exceeds atrial pressure, AV valves close, preventing the backflow of blood into the atria. Once ventricular pressure exceeds pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery, we enter the next phase, rapid ventricular ejection. The semilunar valves open, and there is a sudden ejection of a large volume of blood from the ventricles into the aorta and pulmonary artery. This results in the delivery of oxygenated blood to the body and deoxygenated blood to the lungs. The atria begin to accumulate blood from systemic circulation and the lungs. Phase 4 is next, reduced ventricular ejection. Blood continues to leave the ventricles, but not because of ventricular contraction. The blood flows out due to the blood's inertia. The atria continue to collect blood for the next cardiac cycle. Since aortic pressure exceeds the pressure in the left ventricle, blood starts to flow back into the heart. Once the pressure in the ventricles falls sufficiently, the semilunar valves close. Note that the aortic valve closes before the pulmonary valve. The semilunar valves closing stops blood from flowing back into the ventricles. Now all four valves are closed. No blood is entering or leaving the ventricles, so the volume within them is being maintained, hence the term isovolumetric ventricular relaxation, the fifth phase. Blood volume in the ventricles stays the same until ventricular pressure is lower than atrial pressure. Then we have the next phase. Phase six is rapid ventricular filling. Atrial pressure exceeding ventricular pressure makes the atrioventricular valves open, allowing blood from the atria to rush into the ventricles. On to phase 7, the last and longest phase. This phase is called reduced ventricular filling, or diastasis. During phase 6 and 7, the ventricles receive 90% of the blood they will pump out. The remaining 10% is acquired during phase 1 of the next cardiac cycle, atrial contraction. The initial 90% of blood enters the ventricles while the atria are relaxed, so the process is called passive ventricular filling. When the atria contract, forcefully pushing some more blood into the ventricles, they complete ventricular filling so that there is optimal blood volume for the next contraction. Now let's graph pressure changes over the course of the cardiac cycle in the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the aorta. During atrial contraction, there's an increase in pressure in the atria. There is also a slight increase in ventricular pressure as the atria pump blood into the ventricles and ventricular volume increases. During isovolumetric contraction, there is a rapid increase in pressure in the ventricles as they contract and the AV valves close. But the pressure in the left ventricle does not exceed the pressure in the aorta, so the aortic valve remains closed. When the pressure within the ventricles exceeds the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary arteries, the semilunar valves open and we enter the rapid ventricular ejection phase. As the left ventricle ejects the blood it contains, the pressure in the left ventricle and the aorta reach their peak. During reduced ventricular relaxation, ventricular pressure starts to decrease, and the blood keeps being ejected due to the blood's inertia. 
During isovolumetric relaxation, pressure decreases in the ventricles as they relax. Aortic pressure exceeds left ventricle pressure and the semilunar valves close. Blood starts to flow back to the heart, which causes a dip in aortic pressure called the dichrotic notch. Blood volume in the ventricles remains the same until pressure in the ventricles is less than that in the atria. Once atrial pressure exceeds ventricular pressure, the atrioventricular valves open and we get rapid ventricular filling. This results in a swift decrease in atrial pressure. During the seventh phase, reduced ventricular filling, aortic pressure continues to fall. Note that there are also abrupt changes in pressure when valves open or close, allowing blood to flow or preventing backflow, respectively. The lub-dub sounds of the heart, called S1 and S2, correspond to the AV valve closing and opening, respectively. S1 marks the beginning of ventricular systole during the isovolumetric contraction phase. The ventricles contract and generate enough pressure to close the AV valves. S2 marks the beginning of ventricular diastole during the isovolumetric relaxation phase when the semilunar valves close. Now let's discuss what the cardiac cycle looks like on an ECG or EKG, which is a visual representation of the cardiac cycle's electrical events. This recording of electrical activity over time is captured with the help of electrodes on the skin's surface. It features a series of characteristic waveforms and intervals that correspond to electrical and mechanical events that occur during each heartbeat. First, there's the P wave, a small upward deflection that represents the depolarization, and hence the contraction, of the atria. Next, there's the PR interval, which is the time between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex. The PR segment is the flat line between the end of the P wave and the start of the QRS complex. It represents the time delay between atrial and ventricular activation. Note that it is also the baseline for the ECG curve. The QRS complex is a distinct waveform that represents the rapid depolarization of the ventricles, which leads to their contraction or ventricular systole. The QRS complex occurs at the start of the isovolumetric contraction phase. Next, the ST segment is a horizontal line that represents the interval between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. Then there's the T wave, a dome-shaped waveform that represents repolarization, or relaxation, of the ventricles. It corresponds to phase 4, reduced ventricular ejection. The QT interval is the time from the start of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave, and it represents the total time for ventricular depolarization and repolarization. Finally, the TP segment is the flat baseline that follows the T wave and precedes the next P wave. It represents the interval between ventricular repolarization and the next atrial depolarization. During this phase, both the atria and ventricles are relaxed. 